In this video, we'll be looking at uh, the vascular bundles that we can find in dicot. Now, dicot stands for dicotyledonous plants, which are plants that can make seeds that contain two uh, cotyledons. And, and the cotyledons are basically organs that act as uh, food stores for uh, developing plant embryos. Now, you won't ever get questions about explaining in detail what the dicots are, but what you do need to know is that dicots, uh, they contain vascular bundles, which are basically their transport system. System. And then you need to know about the structure of both of the uh, different aspects that mix up the entire vascular bundle. So the vascular bundle is basically uh, made up of two different vessels, or two different types of vessels. The first one is the xylem, and the other one is the phloem. So we'll need to, uh, you'll need to be able to draw these particular cross sections in the stem, fruits, or sometimes in leaves. Although I would say the leaf one would be a little bit uh, less common. Most common ones that you would need to draw will be the stem and the roots. So let's make sure that we know the labels of these first. So for the stem ones is basically if we cut it, uh, cut the stem open and we look at the cross section of it, you will see this sort of structure. And the xylem are the ones. Uh, on the near the inside of it. So we say that the xylem and the phloem are organized in bundles, so we call them the vascular bundles. And you can see that the vascular bundles are in sort of a, a ring shape structure. So the xylems will be on the inner side of the vascular bundle, whereas the phloem will be on the outside of that. And sometimes certain pests, let's say aphids, can have a sharp mouthpiece that pierces through the surface of the stem, and then they would be able to get the sugars that are transported in the phloem like that. And I mean, in some se in some sense, you can remember it, the phloem being on the outside. So that is why the aphids will be able to eat the sugar. If the phloem is on the inside, they will not be able to do that. Then there's just a little bit more uh, in terms of the structure here. So we can know that this layer here is called the epidermis. And then we've got the cortex sort of in between the epidermis and the ring of vascular bundle. And then on the very inside of that, that will be the parenchyma. And we'll talk a little bit more about the parenchyma when we look at the detailed structures of the xylem vessel itself. So that is the cross section of the stem. So this one is the cross section of a root, and we know it's a root because of the root hairs extending out of it uh, to increase the surface area to absorb water and mineral ions. So first of all, the xylem is on the inside here. Uh, one way to remember is that the xylem starts with an X, so it's kind of like a, a, a cross shape or an X shape. Um, structure in the middle of the roots. And then the phloem exists sort of around the xylem, like that. Then uh, after that I need to talk about three different layers uh, that we can find in roots. Um, just so that you are aware, because uh, some of the times where people quite often uh, mix up these three different layers. So first of all we think about the outside layer, so the layer with the root hair, so that is called the exodermis. So usually dermis refers to like uh, almost like the skin, like a surface uh, particular thing that's wrapping around that particular structure. So the one on the outside is called the exodermis. So remember exo means the outside. Then we've got the uh, middle layer here, and that layer is called the epidermis. It's kind of like in the middle, like epi is like in the middle. Then we've got this other layer, the smaller one that is surrounding uh, the vascular bundle, and that is called the endodermis. So endo means inside. So it's really important to know the uh, difference between these three things. Specifically, we'll talk a little bit more about the endodermis uh, later in another video when we talk about the water transport in the roots. And that is the cross section of the roots. Then for the leaf, it's relatively straightforward. So imagine it, this is again a cross section of the leaf, so we would have the parasite mesophyll layer, kind of like on the upside here, and the spongy mesophyll on the bottom, and then the stomata and everything else. And the xylem is on, uh, and, and, and there is a specific area here where you've got the vascular bundle. So the one on the top would be the xylem, and the one on the bottom would be the phloem. Like I said, most of the time they will ask you to draw the stem and the root, not so much of the leaf, but just so that you're aware, you need to be able to recognize that if they do show it up in a particular uh, picture. And now we'll actually go into a little bit more detail about the structures of the xylem and the phloem vessels themselves. So we'll start with the xylem. 
So the main function of the xylem is to transport the water and mineral ions up the plant, keeping in mind that the vascular bundle is sort of their transport system in the plant. So we've got the xylem that is specifically going to move the water mineral ions and it's going up the plant from the roots up because the root is where we mainly get the water and the mineral ions. And that movement is sometimes referred to as the transpiration pull or transpiration stream. We'll talk a little bit more about that in another video when we talk about transpiration. Another function of the xylem is to support the plant and keeping it upright. And the reason for that is because of a very special chemical that is deposited onto the cell walls of the xylem, keeping it rigid and that chemical is called lignin. The thing is, if uh, the lignin is to actually be deposited onto the cell wall, uh, the, the xylem itself needs to be dead in order to for it to actually do that. So lignin is uh, a woody and waterproof substance that uh, basically strengthens the cell wall of the xylem because we say the transpiration pool has got a high pressure to it. So if it doesn't have the lignin in it, then it will not necessarily be able to withstand that pressure uh, of the water uptake. So that's why we need the lignin to be able to support the plant uh, at, well, through depositing in the, uh, in the xylem walls. And apart from that, that the xylem itself is actually dead, so that lignin can deposit in it, but also that uh, it won't have any organelles within the tube, so making it a hollow tube. Uh, the transfer of water will not necessarily be hindered by any other object inside it, so it's about having that smooth flow of water. So let's now have a look at the detailed structure of the xylem. So in the beginning, actually, uh, same with the xylem and the phloem, uh, it's origin they are originally a stack of cells, a stack of plant cells like that. The thing is for the xylem, uh, first thing that happens is that uh, the cell wall starts to break down. So in this case of xylem, the cell walls uh, in between the cells will completely, utterly break down in order to form like a hollow tube. So you can see the end, sometimes the end of it may not necessarily uh, completely break down, but then generally speaking, the cell wall is gone in order for that hollow uh, and hollow tube and smooth flow of water. So we say that the water generally moves up the xylem like that and actually they will be able to move out of the xylem uh, to surrounding cells if they need to. So like we said before that the cell wall itself is lignified and the lignin can exist in rings or in spiral. Uh, often we see that it's in uh, in those two particular shape when we look at uh, look at the lignin underneath the microscope. And the lignin point is to uh, provide mechanical strength to the xylem to uh, withstand that high pressure in the transpiration pool. But sometimes we can have these specific pits in, uh, in the xylem wall. And these are what we call the non-lignified pits. And like I said before, the lignin itself is waterproof. So the water can't actually move out of the cell wall that easily. But because we've got these non-lignified pits, uh, which only has the uh, plasma membrane in it, so it would allow the water and the mineral ions to be able to move out to the surrounding cells if uh, necessary. So it's about allowing them to actually leave the xylem uh, when they get to the right places. And also next to the xylem uh, vessel, they will also have uh, sometimes xylem parenchyma cells and they serve two main functions. Xylem parenchyma contains uh, food stores, so in, in order to, uh, to enable the xylem to sometimes grow if necessary or even to repair. Uh, and also they contain a tannin, which is a, a specifically bitter chemical. And because it is bitter, that means when herbivores eat uh, the plant itself, they would taste the tannin, which is not very great tasting. It will stop the herbivores from eating the plant any further, so act as a defense mechanism against the herbivores. And that is the uh, structure of the xylem. So now we'll move on to the structure of phloem instead. So again, we'll start with talk about the function and some of the properties of phloem. So the main function of the phloem is to transport uh, simulates up and down the plant. The word assimilates refer to the products of photosynthesis, but uh, basically it's about the sugars. Uh, and sometimes actually we say that in phloem, in the past in GCSE, you might remember that it's about transporting sugars, or sometimes you may say transporting uh, glucose because glucose is the product of photosynthesis. However, actually, uh, Glucose is not the sugar that is being transported in phloem, but sucrose instead. Uh, the glucose, once it's made in the leaves, they would be uh, converted into sucrose, which is a less reactive form, as a more stable form of sugar. Because it is uh, less reactive, that means it's not as easily uh, used up in respiration uh, than glucose. And we'll come back to this point in, the, in a second. 
Uh, the other point that he, in within the function here we can see is the fact that it goes up and down a plant, not like in the xylem where the water just goes in one single direction. And rather than saying up and down, we can actually be a little bit more specific. It's actually better to say that the sugar is transported from the source to the sink. And the source refers to uh, basically the uh, particular organs that uh, the sugar originated from. So obviously one of them would be the leaves because that's where photosynthesis occurs that makes sugar. And also seeds and fruits would be the other one where there are the fruit, uh, food stores which they store the sugar or they store starch and that's where the sugar can come from. And then the sink refers to any other part in the plant that uses up the sugar for, for uh, respiration, for growth or active transport, whatever it is. So actually it's talk about every single other place in the plant. And we say another difference between a phloem and the xylem is that the phloem is alive. And it's actually really important that it is alive because if it's alive, that means it's got all the organelles inside itself and also then they can actually do active transport in that sense. We said that active transport is a very important function or important aspect uh, for translocation, which is the official term for the movement of the simulate. So actually a translocation is the key word to describe how sugars or the assimilates are being moved up and down the plant. Translocation requires energy uh, for it to work. So therefore, if the phloem is not alive, it's dead, therefore it will not be able to do the translocation instead. And actually precisely because of that point, therefore the sugar that we transport must be uh, sucrose and not glucose, so that the uh, thing that we're trying to uh, move is not accidentally being used up uh, for active transport when we're trying to move it. So that's phloem. So now we'll look at the structure of it. So the phloem again, it's uh, originally a stack of cells, but again, you can see that the cell wall would be broken down, but not completely, only partially. In the phloem, they are kind of separated into segments, and we say we call individual segments the sieve tube element. So kind of like almost as if they're individual cells. And the reason why we use the word sieve is because actually if we look at the cell wall that has been partially broken down, imagine it's like a plate with holes in it, so it's almost like a sieve. So therefore we call the uh, individual parts now the sieve plates. So in between two sieve plates would be the sieve tube element, and then obviously the entire tube is called the sieve, uh, the sieve tube. Now here we actually can see that there's another structure that is very much interlinked with the phloem itself, and that is called the companion cell. And the companion cell is very, very important. It's basically the life support system, uh, so it keeps the phloem alive. Uh, they actually share a lot of the cell structure with the phloem. Uh, so we say that actually through these gaps here, with what we call the plasmodesmata, then they allow the cytoplasm and everything else to actually freely flow across uh, and between the adjacent cells. Plasmodesmata is a plural form of it. If we just want to look at one single gap, then it's called the plasmodesma. Kind of like how stomata actually uh, is a plural form and stoma is the singular. So we've got, we got the plasmodesmata, which are the gaps in the cell wall that links the uh, cytoplasm, to get, uh, cytoplasm of adjacent cells. So in this case, the sieve tube itself and the companion cell next to it. And like I said, the companion cell keeps the phloem alive because they are able to share any of the resources between them. But actually another really, really important function of the companion cell is that actually it is the key, it's got a key role in translocation. Remember earlier I said that translocation is the transport of assimilates uh, in the phloem from the source to the sink. And uh, they require, uh, active transport uh, is needed in this particular process. And actually when, we look, when you look at the other video which focuses on translocation, you will see it's about the companion cell using energy to move the sucrose into the companion cell itself from the surrounding area and then pass it on to the uh, sieve tip itself. So that's why it's got a really, really important function there as well. And that is the function and the structure of phloem as well. So we'll have a very quick overview. So first of all, we say that this uh, video is about the dicots, and it's specifically about the vascular bundles in the dicots, which are made up of the xylem and the phloem. So you need to know the cross-section in the stem and the root and the leaves and be able to label the structure itself as well. Xylem is the tube in the vascular bundle which transports the water and the mineral ions up the plant from the roots. Uh, itself, and we call that movement of water the transpiration pool because the transpiration pool is possible because of the effects of transpiration, which we'll talk about in another video. 
Another function of the xylem is to support the plant because it's got lignin deposited in the cell wall, keeping it and uh, giving it mechanical strength to uh, withstand the high pressure inside the xylem tube itself and keep the plant upright. And we say that originally there are basically a stack of cells and then the cell wall in between the cells completely break down to form a hollow tube. And uh, then the walls, the cell wall gets deposited with lignin. Uh, and also, but then there are parts of it, there are gaps where they don't have any liquid in it and therefore that allows the water and mineral ions to actually leave the xylem to the surrounding area. And they also have the xylem parenchyma cell, which can store the food and also contain uh, tannin, which is uh, a bitter chemical that serves as a defense uh, against the herbivores. And we say the water and mineral ions can move up the xylem in this particular process. Lastly, about the phloem. The phloem is the vessel in the vascular bundle that transports the assimilates up and down the plant from the source to the sink. And it is alive, unlike the xylem, uh, because they need to be alive in order to do active transport for translocation to actually uh, occur. And here we got it. So the cell wall in between the cells did not completely break down, but only partially broken down and are forming these what we call the sieve plates. And then in between two sieve plates, we call that a sieve tube element. So kind of like the original uh, phloem cell. And the entire vessel is called the uh, sieve tube itself. And in the sieve tube, on the walls of the sieve tube, you've got the plasmal desmata, which are the gaps that link uh, the phloem and the companion cells together, allowing substances to actually cross uh, between them. And the companion cell itself keeps the cell uh, keeps the phloem alive. It's a life support system, and also it's um, very very important in the process of translocation. And that is the structure and function of the vascular bundle. <laughs>